Hi friends, today we are going to see a highlighted topic in DSP which is Fourier transform. Fourier transform. Whenever we analyze a signal, it is always simpler when we use a frequency domain characterization of the, of the signal. That actually simplifies the life a lot. Hence, Fourier transform is a very important tool in analysis of signals. Also, we can analyze various types of systems using Fourier transform because looking at a system in frequency domain becomes much more simpler and easier than in than the time domain. So let us analyze different type of signals in Fourier domain or Fourier transform domain. So we are gonna analyze discrete signals. We are gonna analyze discrete signals and systems in Fourier domain and hence the name discrete Fourier transform. So discrete Fourier transform is nothing but a Fourier transform of a discrete time signals or discrete signals and systems. Hence the chapter name is discrete time discrete Fourier transform. Now discrete Fourier transform has been originated from discrete time Fourier transform. Previously we were having discrete time Fourier transform and then we have progressed to discrete Fourier transform. So we can say that previously we were having discrete time Fourier transform and then ultimately we came up with a new tool which is called as discrete Fourier transform. So Discrete time Fourier transform is written as a D T F T whereas discrete Fourier transform is written as a D F T. Now you may comment that uh, there is only one difference of T. How does it matter? Here also we are inputting discrete time. Here also we are inputting discrete time. Here also we are doing Fourier transform and here also we are performing Fourier transform. So that myth will be taken away today like even though we are doing Fourier transform there are two ways of doing the same thing for example let us take first the case of DTFT which is discrete time Fourier transform here what I am gonna do is so let us directly transform the signal or uh, the given signal to Fourier domain by definition so by definition of DFT or DTFT we get uh, x of e raised to j omega equals to summation that goes from n is equal to uh, if I go with a single sided signal let us go with single sided it gives a 0 to infinity that is uh, it's a causal signal I am not considering an anti causal signal otherwise it might uh, start from minus infinity no limits on n uh, x of n e raised to minus j omega n. So this is a definition of DTFT. Here we can see that I am transforming my n to a new variable called omega. So here in DTFT I will be transforming my n to omega. Okay. So n is time, omega is frequency. This is which time? Discrete time. So I am inputting a discrete time signal and I am getting a frequency transformation. So I have transformed or jumped from n to omega by applying this tool which we call as Fourier transform. But because I am applying it to discrete time signal that is why I am calling it as a discrete time Fourier transform. The counterpart for this is CTFT which is continuous time Fourier transform. If we have a continuous signal like x of t and I apply a Fourier transform to it then that becomes a continuous time Fourier transform. Now, when I go to omega domain, the omega domain is very similar to z domain or we are omega is an angular frequency An angular frequency is associated with circles. So I have a circle 
with a very sp special radius of r is equal to 1 because you see there is no magnitude part over here which is 1. So and in this plane the omega is the angle with respect to x axis so this is my omega. Now when I see omega, omega goes from 0 to 2 pi continuously on this circle if I move it is going to change between 0 to 2 pi only it is not going to change more than 2 pi. So if you see that even though I come from a discrete uh, time signal when I convert it to a frequency domain signal or when I converted it to a frequency domain that time I got a continuous circle or a continuous behavioral output. So omega is continuous, omega is not discrete. Time is discrete but the frequency is continuous. And what is the range of frequency? It is 0 to 2 pi. So you would say that so what is the basic difference between continuous Fourier transform and discrete Fourier transform? Continuous Fourier transform frequency is denoted by omega. This we normally called as analog frequency whereas this we called as digital frequency because both are omegas. The analog frequency capital omega is ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity whereas the small omega is periodic with periodicity of 0 to 2 pi. So when I do a continuous time Fourier transform my omega will have a periodicity or the range going from minus infinity to plus infinity whereas for digital frequency my omega will be continuous but the range will be restricted to 0 to 2 pi alone. So this is periodic this is non-periodic. So this digital frequency signal is periodic always with period of 2 pi whereas this is non-periodic okay I do not say always it might be it might not be but here it should be periodic with period of 2 pi. So I continue I have inputted my discrete signal and I will get an output as e raised to j omega this is my Fourier transform. So here I had a discrete signal here I have continuous omega which is varying from 0 to 2 pi only continuous periodic omega ok. So if I wanted to get back from x of e raised to j omega to x of n then I will apply reverse procedure which we called as inverse DTFT and the definition of it is we will get back our x of n from x of e raised to j omega here I will write e raised to plus j omega n and now instead of summation I should put a integration because my omega is continuous. This integration is with respect to omega and because omega is continuous I should not put summation but I should put an integration which will go from 0 to 2 pi which should not be from minus infinity to plus infinity unlike analog Fourier transform here it will be 0 to 2 pi because the limits on omega is not going to exceed 0 to 2 pi and 1 upon 2 pi. So the definition of IDTFT and DF, DTFT is x of omega e raised to this is summation n goes from 0 to infinity does not matter you can have minus infinity also x of n e raised to minus j omega n. So when I go from x of n to x of omega that time I will put summation whereas when I go from x of e raised to j omega to x of n then I will put integration. So this is a couple or we say DTFT and IDTFT definitions. Now further we will now def define discrete Fourier transform. So now I am going to define discrete Fourier transform. Previously we defined DTFT. So DFT also gets input 
as x of n but the output in case of dft is x of k and we can decouple it by using i dft to get back to x of n now by definition by definition x of k is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n e raised to minus j 2 pi n k by n now this is a definition of dft where we have our output or the final transformed signal look like x, uh, called as x of k summation n goes from 0 to n minus 1 x of n e raised to minus j 2 pi n k by n now before going further the id tft over here is giving me back x of n with summation k going from 0 to n minus 1 x of k e raised to plus j 2 pi n k by n now here when i write the definition so when i write a definition over here of i d t f t and d f t i have written both places summation and i have put a limit on n in the first case and limit on k for the second case for the limit on n for the first case goes from 0 to n minus 1 that means my x of n is restricted so what will be the limit on k so the limit on k in this case is 0 1 and so on to n minus 1 it cannot exceeds to n minus 1 whereas in case 2 I have written limit on k but I have not put any limit for n so the limit on n over here is 0 1 and so on to n minus 1 so in both the cases the k and n is restricted and in the second case we will have 1 by n as a divisible part so this is the definition of dtft and dft thank you